Good afternoon. This is the Captive Power Conference Series 2009, and after a wonderful conference in Jaipur on the 14th of September, we are having yet another wonderful conference here on the 16th of September in the city of Bhubaneswar, Orissa. Both states being emerging power hubs. Uh, with us is a gentleman who's uh, played a long and distinguished innings and uh, is now in charge of um, a major chunk of the power sector in Orissa. He is in fact uh, the head of SESU. If I may say, and uh, he has also had a long innings in the aviation sector. So, two critical area sectors, infrastructure sectors, um, uh, are areas where Mr. Vivek Patnaik here uh, has very in-depth knowledge of. He has seen the evolution of the markets. He has, in fact, driven the evolution of the markets uh, in his own uh, various capacities. So, welcome to the conference, sir. And so, we'd like to know. From an overall perspective, because you have uh, the benefit of uh, the oversight of the aviation sector as well. If infrastructure, critical infrastructure is to develop in India, what sort of role can the government, can the regulatory bodies, can the industry play to ensure that rapid industrialization takes place, the environment is protected, consumer interests are protected and uh, there is balanced growth for all? In the first place, the government uh, must not abdicate its responsibility as government even in a place where there is a championship of liberalism. Government must exist to govern. It must legislate. It must establish regulators, particularly the infrastructure sector, which governments have established in the last 20 years. It is not necessary the government should look into day-to-day -day management, no. There was a time when the government was looking after day-to-day -day management. Well, we are in the stage of infancy in our development. We didn't have adequate number of managers. The government managers were the only managers available. Today, there are managers by dozens and hundreds available. The private sector can use them. Secondly, the private sector has the autonomy of taking decisions. Government is subject to so many democratic pressures, media, interference by so many other agencies. They can't take commercial decisions boldly. So they're for private sector. Is that a reason why they're denying open access at times to private uh, players, thus disincentivizing the new power projects? It's because of the fact the government has to remain popular in a democracy. So they cannot afford to alienate their own people. And that particular subject can be easily politicized. Politicized in the sense the government may for good reason allow open access. The opposition will attack them. This will, this will hold good everywhere. So to be on the safe side, they will not. As I just explained, the power belongs to the whole country as a whole. Otherwise, it would have been the state sector. Why in the concurrent list? Electricity is entry 38 of concurrent list under Article 246. It could have been the state list. Then the center would not interfere except in emergency. The very fact the concurrent list, the state has a role and the center has a role. And between the state and the center, the center is bigger. Okay. <laughs> State is not sovereign, the center is. Point to be noted. Yes. But the state has this uh, grudge, the fact that, uh, you see, the power to raise revenues, taxes, is overwhelmingly in favor of the center. Mm -hmm. Now, this, the constitutional, the fathers of the constitution, the founding fathers had appropriate reason at that point of time. They wanted to hold India together to make it an integrated nation. So they gave it a fairly strong center. The states feel, sir, that they are, they have to manage the actual ground realities. Yeah? and uh, they will face a problem, for example, why should they surrender their finances to the centre? And no matter what the Finance Commission says, the state always feels that it is a short charge and they should have a larger share of the uh, centre's funds. So this is why, uh, where, where can the balance be, sir? How can it be that the centre can drive this agenda of development, that no state feels that the other state is getting more uh, you know, share of revenues, and that the state can also allow open access and you know, allow private generation over here to develop? How, where is the balance, sir? In the first place, uh, this is a very uh, complex uh, issue based on 
historical factors, political factors, economic factors, which uh, perhaps you don't expect me to address in a short interview like this. Uh, we are talking in terms of the existing constitutional pattern. What will the future, we do not know. Whether amendments should we take place to bring more power to the state is another question. Yes, there is a school of thought, very strong school of thought, to which I subscribe personally, the state must become financially autonomous, otherwise they can't progress. It is better to make the states financially autonomous, otherwise they'll be rumbling, and they'll be bickering, and they'll be, uh, which will all ultimately give rise to agitation and Fisiferous tendencies, so it's better to make it autonomous. How to do that autonomy, how to bring about that financial autonomy, uh, it has to be carved out by negotiation at the present stage. Gone are those days when one single party used to control the whole country. There are many parties, many states have, uh, are not aligned with the center politically, so therefore there has to be negotiation. You can't. And this is 21st century. In 19th century, things were different. 20th century, middle, it was totally different. People are conscious. I mean, electronic media has, and uh, you can see everything live, what is happening in America, everybody sees here, what is happening in Georgia, people see here. So therefore, people are conscious. They would not like, unless there's negotiation. You can, you can write rough shot. But what is important that people, both places, center and the state, must lift themselves above their height. Right. Above the right. And look at the national interest. National interest. True. I mean, as I told, if your borders have been threatened and there is uh, uh, every reason to believe the segment of population of the country itself is aligned with people outside, we call them the forces outside are from north, north of in, uh, India or west of India, wherever they are from. But if they are, you have to. Think in terms of national interest nationally. So that's what I'm going to say. Here.